My brethren, peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Word, which is located in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. And two, only verse two. Who didn't bring a Bible is there on the projection. Amen. Let's read together. Verse two. Let's read. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Amen? The church may sit down. The group is going to sing a song. Brethren, this song 
shows to us the power of God. And it is in this Jerusalem, this spiritual heavenly Jerusalem, that we hope to live in. We desire, we want, we plead to the Lord so that this day arrive soon. Because we want to see the streets of gold. We can see the heavenly dwellings that the Lord has for us. That's what He has promised to us. That's the promise of God. A place where there will be no longer crying, sadness, bitterness, anger. There will only be joy. Have you imagined a place like that? Have you thought how heaven is? It's even difficult to explain. But that's what God has for us. The promise of God is that one day we will depart from this world and everything will be left behind. And we will eternally be before God who is rich, who is mighty, and there will be only in our lips words of praise. But how is that possible? We will always be singing praises to the Lord. God doesn't have a measurement of time. In heaven there is no time as it is measured here. For God one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. We count time. Because man has a limited life. Because man lives his life counting his days towards death. But there in eternity it will be different. And the Lord hears here his he when the Lord he uses Solomon to write this proverb. He says that a rich and the poor they met. He says that they both have been made by God. The rich as well as the poor. So that it doesn't exist in the mind of God. There is no difference. For us, it ex this different exists. If we would make a comparison between what is to be rich and what it is to be poor it's quickly comes into our mind it's being rich is to have a house that is completely paid off uh, near the beach a luxury apartment on the highest floor having cars expensive cars uh, imported cars having a bank account, a uh, fat bank account, having children in the best schools, not having to worry about the tomorrow, being rich is probably this. I look, I look around and see those, those toys, uh, people that work with, uh, they have uh, all sorts of toys, they're rich. Being rich is this. Rich is for you to sleep today and say, tomorrow I'm going to wake up whenever I, I want. Whenever I feel like waking up, if, if I go to work, I'll go. If, it's, if I don't want it, I'm not going. I'm not comparing rich to the lazy. The lazy, the lazy is the one who wakes up whenever he wants, he doesn't care. The rich is the one who does not worry with the the end of the month. Oh, how am I going to pay for my rent? I have to save money here, uh, push the, the electrical bill or the, the bill of the car. Rich don't worry about that. Gasoline, expensive, inexpensive, the dollar is going up or down. He doesn't, he doesn't care. But the poor, the poor is different. The poor is the one that doesn't have any of it. He sells his lunch to buy the dinner, like they say. The poor is the one. 
poor man. He has nothing in life. He doesn't have even reason to leave. He begs, asking for help, at the mercy of time, at mercy of everyone. This is the vision, the human vision, over what is to be rich and what it is to be poor. But now, how God sees the rich and the poor? Can you tell me? Who is rich and who is poor in God's mind? Rich for God, do you know who that person is? Jesus. Jesus is rich because he's the owner of everything. Jesus is eternal. The riches of Jesus is great. The poor man is poor. It is us. Even the ones that think that they, they feel they are financially well off, they are poor. Because we have n nothing is under our control. We don't have control even of our own health. Have you thought about that? How many people they think they have everything in life, a house, car, money, but when the sickness comes, even say, I would sell everything, I would give everything that I have to purchase 10 more years of life with a better health. People say that. Do you know that? People say that. that I would give everything that I have, everything that I, I earned, that I inherited from my parents, that I was able to administer in order to have health, strong health. But man is poor. Man, man thinks that man is rich, but every man is poor. Man is poor in their actions, in their words. Man is poor. They say, they promise, but they don't fulfill their promises. Man is poor in love because their love extinguishes with time. They promise, I'm going to love until death do us part. But then the age comes, the wrinkles, and the n not even plastic surgery can take care of it, not even makeup can hide it away, and then their love runs out. Man is poor in forgiving people. There are people that never forgive. They don't even forgive their own parents. They don't know what it is to forgive. They don't know what it is to live with other people. They don't know what, it, what is a relationship. They don't have friends. They don't even know what is friendship. There are people that are like this, poor, poor spirit. People there are poor in their health, I already mentioned, and in life. Our days are counted towards death. And the Bible says that man's life is a short tale. You begin here, when you least expect, you're already on the land of the dead. It's a difficult thing. There's no way out. The only thing that man has, the only thing that man has, that nobody will take away from him, is death. And I'm sure there is one thing that I have that nobody will take away from me is death. The day my death comes, there's no stopping. We are departing to the 20 to 22nd century. How many are going to uh, get there? Have you imagined? It is just 80, a little more than 80 years. I don't even want to think about it. I'm, I'm not even going to get halfway. I don't think I'm going to live 20 more years. It's difficult to think about this. How look how life a man's life is. Our children or even our children may not arrive like 82 years in 22nd century. Yeah, that's man's life. We are poor. 
We have nothing. But the Word tells us that our God has as rich. Our God is rich. The Bible s says that the blessing of God enriches men. It doesn't bring suffering. Have you thought about that? A blessing, a riches that does, doesn't bring pain. It's only when man accepts Jesus. It is when man meets Jesus. So the psalmist says that the rich and the poor, they met. You know why this order? There is this order because Jesus who came towards us to meet us it was Jesus that when he was called to bring salvation to man, Jesus made himself available saying, here am I. And Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus emptied himself of all his riches, of his grace, and made, made himself as man. So uh, a man who is poor could become rich. So the grace of God, which is manifested in Jesus, who is rich, made man who is poor to become rich. Jesus let go of everything. The Bible says that Gideon, he tested God. He asked, he asked uh, God uh, to give him a proof. And this proof was prophetic. Gideon was called to help his people that was living uh, under dif great difficulties being brought by the Midianites. The book of Judges said that they would go to the heart, to the planted, and then when the harvest came, the Midianites would come and steal all their harvest. They were weak, but Gideon found something that was prophetic. Gideon found a mystery that nobody knew. He went to work the weed inside of the inside of the wine press and there because which is the wine press not on the threshing floor there he found this great mystery because the enemy didn't know this secret the right would go would be to get the weed go to the the threshing floor throw the, the weed there let it dry and then to work the weed and separate the skin from the grain that was the conventional what was normal he was doing this process that the enemy would come and then everything that, uh, after the the skin had been removed and the grain was separated that's when the enemy would come and steal it the enemy didn't even want to work on the wheat the enemy does that and Gideon found out secret. He took the result of his harvest and brought into the the, 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 the wine press. The wine press was a hole that was made on the rock and they would put the, the grapes there. They would stomp on the grape and pr produce the, the juice, grape juice from there. And he put the wheat there and his harvest was saved. And an angel came to Gideon and said, you are, you are a valiant man. The angel saw him and said, You are a valiant man. It was not because he was strong, no. It was because he found a mystery, a secret. And then he said, Look, I'm going, but I'm going to do a test with God. If that's true, I'm the smallest. If God has this blessing for me, if God has already called me, to help my people, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to uh, get a, a ball of wool. I'm going to put on the backyard. And during the night, I want this ball of wool. Uh, in the morning, it would be. I want it to be wet, and around it, I want the the ground to be dry. So then you place it there, and the following day. In the morning, it was exactly like that. He squeezed the ball of wool and it was a glass of water. 
And they said, no, I'm, I want to uh, do another test. I want the opposite. I want the wall to be, a bowl of wall to be dry and the ground around to be uh, wet. So then he went to sleep and the following day, that's what happened. This test that he made is a mystery. You know why? Because it spoke of Jesus. Man was like this, dry. Man's nature was dry, was a desert without life. But Jesus was everything. In eternity, Jesus is God. Here is God. He has always been God. He's always God. He's always be God. The Bible says that from eternity to eternity, He's God. This is our Jesus. This is our Savior. But man is dry. But when, when Jesus came to the world, He emptied Himself and was able to reach man's heart. And this riches that He has, which is eternity, which is everything, He gave to us. And today, in Jesus, we are able to reach our eternity, eternal life. Not this life that we uh, count towards death, but a life that nobody is going to take away from us or guarantee our assurance because the Bible says that Jesus, He emptied Himself for man and He left eternity, He came to the world and He, he gave the salvation, the right that we have to be with God eternally. That's why the Bible says that the rich and the poor, they met. And this meeting was uh, scheduled in eternity. The day when God reached his heart, the day in which God removed your poverty, the day in which God gave you, guaranteed your passport, the day in which you met Jesus and you accepted him as your Savior. That's the day when became, you became rich. Was the grace of God that is, is enough for us. The grace of God is everything for us. But now, salvation in Jesus, we only received salvation in Jesus and remained here in this trial, in, in this battle, that would, would have been enough. But when we enter inside of this project, when we are able to reach, when we live this life, this fourth measure, and we enter in which, in, in what is eternal, where time is not counted, God begins to bless us. And salvation Jesus is lived here. Here you begin to have the assurance. You begin to have joy. Here you begin to be transformed. Here you begin to live everything that God has for you. Salvation man begin to be lived here in the world. But not getting contaminated with the world. Not taking the shape of the world. Because with, with not taking the form of the world, we are here passing by because what God has for us is this Jerusalem in which you want to be forever. And this meeting one day was scheduled on eternity. And that was the greatest meeting that we had. Well, it's a meeting that changed our lives, changed our destiny, changed our luck. Today we are no longer poor. Now we are rich. Because uh, whoever God that is everything for us, I can do all things in the one who strengthens me. The psalmist would say, uh, what am I going to give to the Lord for all the benefits that he has given me? What can we give to the Lord? What can you give to God? Maybe your car, your apartment. No, God doesn't want that. God doesn't want this because this is fleeting. This car in five years is all rusted. It looks like the car was designed so every three years you need to get a new one. God doesn't want that. What am I going to give to the Lord for all the benefits that He has given me? Only our heart. What we can give to the Lord is what one day He gave to us. He lent to us, which is our life. 
the breath of life, the soul that was given to us by God. That's what we want to give to the Lord. You should give to the Lord the contrite heart, the sincere heart. That's what God wants. That's why when God meets men, that's all He waits for men, uh, expects from men, the sincerity and the acceptance that He is our Savior. There is no other interest from God. What else can a rich expect from the poor? Take a rich and let the rich meet with the poor. But Jesus, when Jesus comes toward us, it is because He wants to bless us, because He wants to carry our pains. He wants to take our, our pover poverty away the sadness, the pride and the bitterness, he takes all of it away and he gives us what, he's had, what he has, which is eternal blessing and eternal life that we are only able to reach in Jesus. May God tonight meet with you tonight. Maybe you never met Jesus truly. Maybe you know the Bible, you carry the Bible, you sing songs but you never met with Jesus because you didn't want to meet Jesus but he's always at our disposal he's always seeking us whatever there is a needy there is Jesus whatever there is someone that is a blessing of God Jesus is present we see this in the entire ministry of Jesus that's what it is to have riches. It is Jesus when he was slapped on the face. He gave the other side of his face. That's, that is, this is what he teaches. Jesus, when the Roman soldiers went there to pick him up on the mount, when his, they said, we came to pick up Jesus. Who is Jesus? They could have said, no, I don't know who he is. But Jesus said, here am I. When he said, here am I, they all fell to the ground because the word of Jesus has power. The word of Jesus is power. It's miraculous. When Jesus on the cross, he was there, being crucified, what did he say to the Father? Forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. That's the riches that only Jesus can give us. And this is what we begin to receive from Jesus when we are in Jesus and he teaches us to live he teaches us to love he teaches us to be like he is so man needs to want this this meeting needs to be a meeting between God and man between Jesus and man but you need to accept him and he is, he is here tonight and he wants to meet you. God scheduled this meeting tonight to be the day of your meeting with Jesus, the day of your blessing, the day in which you will stop being poor to be the owner of a celestial dwelling, stop walking on foot to be walking on streets of gold. Have you thought about that? That's what the Lord has shown. Has shown in a vision. There's a woman pointed here so when she heard this song, Jerusalem, she would be amazed. She would want to live because that's what she heard about this new Jerusalem. How this new Jerusalem is what God has for us there. And that's what God has for you. The riches that never extinguishes. An eternal riches. May God bless us. The group is going to sing a song and you'll be speaking with the Lord in your heart, whatever you are. You will uh, confirm me this meeting with Jesus. Don't miss this opportunity. Let the Lord touch in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit touch in your life, in your mind, and whatever is yours. And say, God, I accept a need and you'll see how God is going to change your entire life. Everything 
that you have will be in the hands of God. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. 
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Jesus is coming. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. My brethren, the Lord has called us, has invited us, and we are blessed. We are blessed, happy, because our name is written in the Book of Life. And we are waiting for this banquet, for the wedding of the Lamb. They are going to happen, whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not, may the world want it or not, this project of God is already written, is already established. We need to fight so that our name is, is there and that we may go with the church. Isn't it right? When we be raptured. That's a promise that God has for us. Let us stand up. Let's have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, I want to praise your name because so bless pray, our hope is to be with the Lord in the glory and it's not to have sadness or pain but only to contemplate your presence that's why we praise the Lord because this world does not bring affliction to us because we are know that now our victory has already been decreed. Yes, we, we praise you, Lord. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we receive an invitation. And the Lord has made an invitation to a woman. You want to leave in the heavenly Jerusalem or you want to leave here? That's what the Lord has for us. Two paths. is the narrow and the wide. But the Lord instructs us he wants us to choose the narrow path. So that's the path that will lead us to eternity. But for this to happen, we need to leave the eternal gospel. Now this gospel is mixed with the things of the man, with argument, human reasoning, but it calls us to leave this gospel that was left by the Holy Spirit to the church and the church when it accepts and the church leaves this gospel the church begins to be administrator of the project of God because God begins to operate in the life of the church and you begin become a target of the grace and the mercy of the Lord amen so here are the spiritual gifts the te teaching of the Lord and the direction of the Lord so that you may want to live in Jesus letting go of the things of the world and living this great blessing which is walking with Jesus let's close our eyes let's pray bringing the service to an end and after the prayer if you still want an assistance a clarification a better clarification if there was any doubt we're here at your disposal the pastor the deacons uh, ushers the church itself we want to pray for you so that you may receive from the Lord your complete blessing and that the meeting that was scheduled on eternity may happen tonight. Amen. And that you may leave this place with this, this blessing, this eternal blessing in your life. And Lord, we want to praise and give honors to your name because you know, Lord, as a church, we are more than victorious. We are more than victorious, Lord, because we know that our victory is in Jesus. That's why we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the deeds of the Lord, for his actions of justice. They are always being ministered on behalf of your people, on behalf of our lives, Lord. We thank you for the deliverances. We praise the Lord because one day you reached us and today we are here under your powerful hands receiving 
all the benefits of salvation. We glorify you and we ask you that we may have a week even more filled with victories in your presence and that we may see with our eyes of faith your angels beside us, Lord, with uh, swords in their hands, fighting our battles and giving us victories and bringing us to see your glory, Lord. Receive our service and our adoration is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that a wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We are making ourselves available to you to pray for you. You just raise your hand, whatever you are, and we're going to go towards you.